Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. You've been great and I appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, let me explain how it goes. On Sunday, typically I have a heavy tech video uh, that goes over something in great depth um, or more than so than normal. Wednesdays are usually a product development day, like when I talk about a product that's coming in the shop um, or something I've finished porting and just to show. And then on Fridays, typically there's something about racing. Sometimes there are rants that annoy people or something about my projects like the S10 or the Camaro. Today is supposed to be Wednesdays and I'm supposed to be a product review, but I have had zero time. Um, probably because I'm trying to get as much work done as possible. So um, this just is what it is. I do have a set of Brodix big block Chevy heads to show their 366s CNC ported. That was what it was supposed to do today. I just didn't have time to get them on the flow bench. So I didn't want to leave you out. So I was going to do this one because on Sunday, what I'm going to do is I've already done this, but this head um, is from the last video on Sunday about clean versus dirty. This is that head. Uh, I've already flowed it and it's been on the flow bench, both dirty and clean. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it. But um, the next thing I did was I surfaced it. See how the clean the deck surface is now. I took 18 thousandths off and then I float it before doing the deck and then after to see if you could lose flow or gain flow. And that'll be on the video on Sunday. Also did the valve job and float it after this way so I could tell you um, how much is surfacing the head changed the flow, how much the valve job changed the flow. That's on Sunday. Today, just because I'm trying to make really quick one, just kind of get one out of the way is I'm going to show you how to uh, assemble the heads. So you've got an LS3 head and you want to install it. The people you need to get a hold of is Brian Tooley. This was in, the customer sent this with it. But Brian Tooley really does have great valve train kits. And they include the following thing. So if you've never seen it, let me show you. You'll get a good quality spring. It's a dual spring. And they're rated to, they say on here like, they have the numbers here in case you're wondering, but 650, 660 lift. So good spring for sure, quality. They'll come with a retainer. Now this one's a chrome molly retainer, but they have the exact same kit with um, titanium. Um, titanium of course is lighter, so it helps you, um, have, it gives you a better potential to rev higher um, without having valve float issues, potential. And then they also come up, come up with these. These are inside diameter locators. Now for you LS guys, if you've ever taken apart a set of LS heads, you probably took off ones from the guide and you'll notice that they have the seal on it. And then you get this and you're like, what's up with this? Well, you're not supposed to, and even has a piece of paper in the kit. If I can get it not be stuck underneath some other piece of paper. There you go. It even has this in the kit to tell you don't do it. These are stock um, locators and seals. They do not work with this spring. The diameter is different on the inside and will cause the spring to have problems. So if you're looking at it, you're like, what's going on with this? That, that's the reason why. These are locators that comes in the kit. They go below. They go on the head like so, and then the spring goes above it. Okay? And then they also come with their locks. Don't reuse the stock locks. Just use what they come in the kit. And these look like really good quality ones. The last thing is seals. Now, I'll warn you, if you got one of the older Brian Tooley kits, and you're thinking, well, you'll notice that there's a little bit of difference. They used to have a brown and a black seal. These are all black. Uh, the brown was supposed to be for the intake and the black for the exhaust or vice versa. But now they all just are black, which is nothing wrong with them. I don't even know that there was a difference. Maybe one was a little bit looser on the inside for the exhaust so that more oil come because the exhaust typically gets more heat in it so you could use more oil. I I'm not for sure, but they're all black now. Now you've got your kit and you're like, what do I do with it? Like, I don't understand how to do it. So I'm going to show you real quick. There's a couple things you need. Um, some people say you don't need it, but I promise you, you do. First off, this. This is a valve spring height checker. It checks the height of the valve spring, like where it would sit. Okay. Now, being that this is LS heads, you actually need a kind of a special one. This one's a little bit different than what you see. Because if you go to JEGS or Summit or whatever, and you type in valve spring mic, you're probably going to get one that looks like this. You can use these, maybe, doubtful. Uh, maybe, because their outside diameter is so big compared to see how it's bigger, it almost goes over the whole thing. It's so much bigger than that one, but the biggest problem is this. 
the the way the height mic works is you're supposed to take your your retainer and it goes on top there and then you slide it in here i'm gonna actually put down the camera so you can see this aim it up okay the way it works is you're supposed to take your retainer you slide it over the mic you grab your two locks and you screw it out until you get a height on the mic. Okay, like that. Now, it'll give you a height from here. Now, if you're like, wow, that looks really wrong, that's because I left off this. You always have to have the locator underneath first and then measure. But I just wanted to show you, that's how it works. The problem with these type ones I use these for pretty much everything else, small block, big block stuff, but they don't really work on the LS for a couple reasons. One, it's too big, so it doesn't really sometimes fit in here, but this one kind of does. But I don't have a valve coming through, so I'm not sure if it's centered. But the biggest reason is this. If I do my, see how it sits in there? It's supposed to measure your distance, so let's say if you're looking at my gauge here, and this would be, 1.8 and I'll scoot it back just there. This would be 1.835. That's from the here to here. But if you notice, my retainer is actually inside. So you could use it, and I've done it before when I was in a pinch, if you measured the distance down and subtract it from that. You could use it. But really what you need is this one. It's a smaller one that's made for the cylinder. That's how it's supposed to sit. So that's one thing you need. Now you might say, why do you need it? Well, this is gonna be strange to some of you, but every not every head has the same installed height. This one, of course, has had a valve job, so that changed it. GM and its infinite wisdom also, um, sometimes just from machining tolerances stack up, you'll have maybe 10 thousandths difference or so. Or you could be in the situation where the, like this head was, the valve job was worn out, and what that caused is the, I mean, if you're just doing it on the car, you wouldn't know your valve job is worn out. But it caused the valve to stick out further because it's pulled up through. Hence, your installed height would also be different. Um, there's other case that can happen, and most people don't even think about it, is someone else could have rebuilt the head, been on an engine that's been driving around forever, sold you it, thinking you got a set of stock heads, when in fact, those are rebuilt. Which means it might have changed. And you're like, how can that happen? Well, when you cut a valve job like this, it's going to cut and it's pushing in and will drag inwards and typically it sinks in well as it sinks in the tip comes this way and it increases your installed height now what's that got to do with anything a kit doesn't have how do i fix that well you check it first because on the box it'll tell you where you should install the spring so on this one it says um at 1.78 it's 155 pounds on the seat. That's what it should be. See it right there? Now, you don't necessarily have to install that. Because when I measured, I measured 1.774 for this one. Now, I've got this expensive valve spring compressor. Um, you may not have this. But what mine does is I put it in the machine. I compress it and it will tell me at 1.774, I've got 161 pounds on the seat. 400 open pounds at 620 lift and this is my distance to cool bind. you need at least um, you get away with 50 I don't know if I go run less but anyway this tells you that so what it's saying is this is how much room I have so if this cam was 620 this is all the specs it would be if I installed it exactly like it was so you don't have to necessarily follow the box but it's if you're trying to get to an exact pressure you really need one of these now in this case, if you notice, I'm 1.774, but if we look at the box, the installed height should be 1.78. That's six thousandths. It's really not that much of a difference. So in most cases, it won't make it. It won't. If I install it just like this, exactly like that, it makes very little difference. Okay, but the more problem is when it's higher, because the installed height will grow, like I said, through wear and all those other things I just mentioned. If that increases, the valve spring pressure will decrease. And here, let me just show you. I'm just going to do a set change here. I'm going to pretend that I have, you know, stuff's worn out. Changing this. 
and my installed height ended up being 1.815. So this is 45 thousandths more than that. Would you like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. Yes, I mean, it could happen, very likely. Let's see what will show up. So an 815 installed height at 620 lift, this will give us my specs. Here we go. All this machine does, like you press it and it tells me my figures. It's pretty neat. Really expensive though. Ah, look what I've come down to. Now it tells me. A seat pressure, 148 pounds. And an open pressure, 379. Now I've got way more buying clearance, obviously, because my installed height's higher. This is a much lower pressure. So what this would tell me is, you, you would like, well, my springs are good up to 660 and I'm only running 620 lift, everything should be fine. If you didn't check your installed height and you put it in like this, chances are you're going to valve float. Not because the springs are bad, it's because you installed them at the wrong height. So the question is, what do I do when this happens? Okay, great question. Brian Tooley's kit's great, but the one thing it doesn't have are these. These are shims. Yeah, Brian Tooley sells them. So you could ask to buy them. And they come in at 60 thousandths, 15, and 30 thousandths height. And the way that they work is, digging it out of the bag here, you put it in, and you put your locator over it. And what it does is it closes the distance and increases your installed height, or sorry, decreases your installed height. This changes your spring pressure. Now you're like, why doesn't he include them in the kit? To be quite honest, most of the times, at least when I've done them, it's usually within five to 10. The smallest shim you have is 15 thousandths. So unless you're 15 thousandths off, you can't use a shim. They don't make a smaller one. Obvious reason is it would wear out or get tore up or just they can't machine it that way. It costs too much, whatever. doesn't really matter. The point is they don't have thinner shims. So unless you're 15 thousandths off, you really never need a shim. And for most part, most of the LS heads I've checked, for the most part, the worst I've ever had to put in was a 15 thousandths shim. So at least on stock ones, for the most part. Um, so, but you could be that one guy or the one of 10 guys that has the worst case scenario and then it's worse. In that case, you really need just shims. But without checking, you never know. And don't say it can't happen to you because a lot of bad stuff happens to people all the time just because they never checked. So there's that. So anyway, that's the kit. That's the stalled height. So there's, there's what you got to do first before you ever bother putting them together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stuff out of the way and I'll show you how to install the seals uh, and stuff properly. Okay, now what I did is I set the t head down on a towel just to protect the deck surface because I'm gonna install the seals. What you can see, I've already put all but one of them on. Here's your note and tip for you. Make sure you have the locator on first because if you put the seal on and you take it off, you've damaged the seal. There's no, no going back. And they only include 16, so <laughs> you're out of luck if you don't. So actually, sometimes they include one extra, but usually just 16, so make sure you don't mess up but here's your tip on these and these are good seals quality seals uh, what i mean by this is they um they have a nice metal seal around the outside or band i guess to protect the rubber or whatever material it is from getting damaged from the spring maybe rubbing against it also good spring here to kind of give it some clamping force on the stem and it gets just the right amount of oil in but here's your tip i use this installation tool and I've had this forever, as you can tell, it's been mushroomed out for me, trying to beat on some of the harder steel seals. But the tip is, if you don't take off the spring, this will damage it. It always has for me. So what I do, let me set the camera down. What I do is I take my fingernail and I just pull off the spring here first. Like that. Okay, I'm going to put it back on. But it prevents it from getting damaged. I put the seal in the holder, and then I just push it on. Hopefully this one will push on pretty easy. One of them was kind of a booger. Oh, right in. That's on. Once it's on, now I'll take the spring and put it back around. That's it. Those are installed. At this time, now you put the valves in. So I usually tilt my head up. And I get ready to install the valves. Now, big important note too. You have to use some assembly lube on the valves stem itself because if you don't you've got a cast iron guide or whatever material that is and the steel is running against it metal rubbing against metal is never good especially without any lubrication 
it's bad. You know, wear them out or just have problems. Worst case, they'll seize, the valve stuck open, seize, the piston hits it, and boom, you lost your engine. So I use this. You don't have to use this. Um, I used to use Royal Purple um, break-in lube. I've used just about everything, Joe Gibbs. But this I just use because it's cheap and it's been effective. I haven't had any initial startup problems because of the lube. So um, this is what I use. I just take it. I'm going to sit down on the camera and show you what I'm doing. Take my valve. I just put dab down it. I'm probably putting too much, but I'd better be safe than sorry. That's my opinion. That's me. So this will get burned off in the first startup of the engine anyway, so it's not that big a deal. When I put it in, I'll put it in. And I'll spin it back and forth a little bit before it hits the seal. Not while it's in the seal. And then push through the seal. And that's in. You do all the rest of that, then you're ready to put the springs on. Okay, the last part, and this one for some could be pretty hard. It's putting the valve spring actually on. Now I do it this way, I stand it up. I've got, I'm using my cheap valve spring compressor, I'm not using my pneumatic one just to show you. This thing costs about a hundred bucks. You can get them from just about anywhere. This is a pro form. It works great for the LS stuff on the small block, big block shot side, not so much because what'll happen is, and you could see it here, this bar here tries to bend back into it. I'm, this is like the fourth one. My better one is this one right here. It's MT. It's a air one, which works great, but not so much for the LS. They have a special adapter for it, but most of you aren't going to have a thousand dollar valve spring compressor watching this video. You might have this. So it's like a hundred bucks. So I'm going to show you how to do it. I do it standing up. Not everybody does it that way. I understand. It. I understand. This makes it easier for me to see always. Here's your tip Vaseline. Just like Stone Tipple Pilot said. Um, what I do is I put a whole bunch around the groove itself because LS valves have these bead locks and they have a round groove there and they'll try to slide it out. So it's kind of tricky to put them in. So um, you can kind of watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna squeeze it on. And sometimes I have to actually grab the head and push it this way. So I'm poodling the whole thing this way so it comes up right over it. It's kind of tricky, but bear with me as I do this. So anyway, um, Let's give it a shot. All right, here we go. You hear me cussing, it's because these are kind of tricky sometimes. Hold it, put it in, grab, push down. Move this around. See, I got my one free hand when I do it like this. I got the other hand holding it. I got a hard time when I have a problem. Ah, we'll give it a shot. It's too far up. Yep, see it's rolling that as I go to compress it. So I have to move it again. And boom, on. That's how you do it, now it's on. Typically I wipe off the Vaseline after, and then what I'll do is just to make sure that they're all good and I ain't got something just by accident sticking in. Just gave them a couple of taps. Wipe it back down. And then I'll do a vacuum test and make sure they're good to go and then out the door. That's how you install the Brian Tooley valve spring kit. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment. I'll be happy to answer.